Hello and welcome back to my playthrough of Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin. Uh, I did some, some hard debating with myself, but in the end I decided I'm not going to do the, the Belfry Luna uh, Gargoyles fight. Maybe later. The, the biggest problem is, is that there's not really anything there for me. Uh, I mean, sure, I could get the, the blue tear stone ring, but everything else is pretty much for magic users or clerics. There's the simpleton spice or the or the skeptic spice. Uh, there's a there's an NPC fight. There's a rare chance for getting more effigies from dogs, but yeah, it's not really not really the type of place I need to go. Uh, oh, hello there. An honor to see you again. This room is not as it seems. There are two, not one, pathways leading out. And only this lovely thing reveals the other path. And this, you lovely thing, only runs on miracles. Shall I provide you with one? Sure. Okay, so, um, the reason why I'm going Huntsman's Copes, uh, is that, uh, after defeating one of the two bosses, um, I can then make it to Earthen Peak and get to, uh, the Stonebender Cloan, or as I like to call her, Titties McGee. Uh, that will allow me to buy the small Titanite shards I need to upgrade my bow, and then after a little bit of grind, the long bow, and then after a little bit of grinding, I can I can buy some large Titanite shards from uh, uh, McDuff, and and get the and get the bow up to uh, to a nice uh, suitable suitably epic level. Uh, if you're planning on doing a uh, hex build, a magic caster who uses uh, dark sorceries, this is the guy that you want to talk to. Uh, doing uh, dark hex build is uh, is a tricky uh, tricky build because you have to have both faith and um, and intelligence, and your uh, spells scale with. Um, with the lowest uh, of the two stats, so you pretty much have to have them both be uh, even, even out all the time. So it, it limits what you can do with vitality and adaptability and the others. So it's something to be aware of. Uh, over there is the Undead Purgatory, and that is the gimmick fight for Dark Souls 2, and uh, I really like it a lot. I do intend to do it, um, but my first priority is going to be getting to the Skeleton Lords. Let's see, I'm using the Flame Sword. That should be good.
hell crap. There we go. Yeah, okay, there's an easier way down there, so I'm gonna do that. Uh, let's see. I mean, I don't really need to do that, it just amuses me. to get a camera lock on that dude because he's gonna he's gonna be a pain probably a pain in my face ah oh, freaking sliver of health just did me a favor and dropped right off the side. Good job, sir. Good job. Oh, need to move forward a little bit. No, sorry, your, your arrow snagged on some solid air. I'm debating whether or not I want to go down there first or do this and then light the bonfire and go the long way around. Yeah, I'm going to do this first, I guess. Uh, let me see. Once again, one of those times where you're supposed to like try to open the door and then be totally surprised that there's a dude on the other side. But uh, unless you have a terrible memory or are a frequent pot smoker, uh, that trick is only going to work once.
survived. Alrighty then. He's gonna come all the way around, I think. Or... Well, if he was gonna come all the way around, he'd use this ladder. So where did he go? weird. That is very weird. Okay. Be careful because there's quite a lot of these. Um, I guess they're moths. I mean, I, I often want to say butterflies, but um, judging from the shapes of their of their bodies, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that they're that they're moths. Down this way is a giant basilisk, but I'm going to snipe him to take him out. Just high enough so that he can't, uh, he can't spew the, the curse uh, uh, smoke on me. So that's good. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. Okay, I did make it. So, two points to Gryffindor for that, but. You 
actually need a message for that one, though. I mean, it's pretty obvious to see it's a door. It's not exactly hidden. Okie dokie. Huh. Well, that was lucky. I'd already released the, uh, the block button, but, uh, either the button stuck or the, uh, game was slow to recognize that I, that I'd lowered my shield, but either way, yes, that was very lucky for me. Sounds like they're having a belching contest. Before hanging out on, on this on this thing, they were all, you know, scarfing down barracho beans and stuff. Um, no, I'm not going to use a flame butterfly, but since I opened up that shortcut, I can come back to light that up the right way. Okay, they're gonna like spring a trap or they're gonna try to anyway. up in time, so that was my bad. Okay. Might very well meet him on the other side. And it is here that I somewhat regret not having yet bought the silver cat ring. Okay, that's what I heard. The little soft uh, sigh that, that uh, announces the uh, the summoning signs, the presence of the summoning signs. 
so toggle to light the torch that thing over there is a um, ferro's lock stone uh, but until I absolutely need them later I'm not gonna go after that because that jump it will kill me many many times over there will be much salt involved in that too all right so I can put away the torch Sure looks like it should have something over there. Alrighty. Um check my inventory. sure it's that whip guy moving around he's making all that noise but tell you what I'm gonna go ahead and go back to Majula or wait do I want to go to Majula or do I want to go to McDuff's I want to go to McDuff's issues I swear I can imagine him trying to masturbate with a with a hot coal he's all like oh flame you burn so good oh 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 fucking flame so hot all right so before I buy it Still need one petrified dragon bone, and I am not entirely sure whether or not I can find that over at Earthen Peak or not. If not, it's cool. If I do, that's what I'm upgrading. Uh, but so. You need two. You need two. And the S stock needs to. Right.
I was afraid of that. Flame. Dear flame. But it's okay. I wonder if I can unlock this. Yeah, I can unlock this because I have the Bastille key now. Oh, come on. Fucking camera lock, man. Okie dokie, so, um, there's, there's a couple of things to get in this area that are going to be real useful. Uh, there's the Sublime Bone Dust. Uh, if you were a, a uh, doing a sorcerer build, uh, oh wow, I don't have the range for that. Crick. If you were a sorcerer, there's the soul spear over here, and so you would also probably want to think about using the bonfire ascetic, because um, even if that means you have to face the um, the boss twice, uh, you can also get extra soul spears and uh, double, triple, or even quadruple them, depending on how much risk you're willing to take. Well, that doesn't really feel like something I just upgraded, does it? Not at all. Switch weapons. Quite frankly, a miracle that I dodged that. And uh, before I go to Earth and Peak and uh, or Harvest Valley and Earth and Peak, there is a very good chance that I am going to um, 
come back through this area and and uh, farm these moths to get uh, more poison moss because uh, well I mean it should be obvious it's the poison area it's highly frickin toxic and uh, I'm gonna be going through those things like uh, like salsa at a, at a uh, all-you-can-eat Mexican buffet So also, for right now, I'm not going to go over there because there's a forlorn uh, NPC invader over there. And, uh, I mean, I can totally take him, but uh, since since there's a risk that he he might get in some lucky shots and put me down, I don't, I don't really want to risk that and lose my um, effigy just yet. So... This is another place where I really, ideally, I would like to do it all in one shot. So, I, that's what I'm going to aim for. And, uh, the same as with, um, No Man's Wharf. The real trick to being able to do this all in one shot is basically being extremely cautious. Being aware of where traps are, ambushes, and things like that. Uh, it helps that I've already played this game before, so I know where most of the ambushes are. Uh, but because it has been a long time since I've played, uh, there's going to be uh, some ambushes later that I will not remember. But I should be good right up to Iron Keep. Nope, he got away on that one. Alright, come on, buddy. Get a little closer. I like to live dangerously, you may have noticed. Okay, so there's a dog and there's a dude over here, and I'm gonna aim for the dog. Ha 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 I really should be following my own advice not to ha ha too soon, but that was just too good. Okay. Now, uh, I can pull the switch. Or the bridge. Because, and you'll, you know, you'll note all of these, um, all of these bloodstains here. And the reason why there's all these bloodstains here is because most people don't see the ambush. They just come over here to the switch, they pull it, or, and then the one dude drops down from there. One dude who was hiding over there comes running in here, and the dog and the other archer also come running in. And so, yeah, you're pretty much boxed in and gang banged to death. It's not a, it's not a pretty way to go. So let me see if I can do this without, without uh, ticking off the forlorn. That would be ideal. Okay. This is a summon sign for Bashful Ray. Yeah, Bashful Ray. Here, look. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not going to summon him yet, but I will soon. Ish. Very ish. Just depends on whether or not I can make it through this area in one go. There's a Cyan Knight here, and he is protecting the Sublime Bone Dust. gonna do a plunge attack. Aw, oh, yeah. That's good stuff. Uh, 
and this is a soul spear and as I said uh, if you don't mind going back through this over and over again uh, you can you can collect quite a few of those for a, for a sorcerer build definitely a very handy uh, thing to use is the bonfire setting and I believe that there's a there's a magic related ring that you can get by fighting the skeleton lords a second time so it's not a bad idea to do that oh hell no I'm not going that way there are uh, he's not a threat he's going to just run around in this area but Sometimes I like to challenge myself by trying to kill him as he passes by. Oh! He just runs around like that. There's a couple of, uh, of hollows like that in this area. They're, they're, they're not really a threat to you. Um, no matter how close they get to you, even if you just stand still, they're going to run right past you. Okay, so here's where the other bonfire is. The door is locked. I know where the key is. And uh, over there is Crichton the Wanderer, who can be summoned for the Skeleton Lord's fight. And I am gonna I'm gonna use both Bashful Ray and Crichton the Wanderer for this fight because uh, in addition to there being three bosses, when you kill one of the skeleton lords they will summon a little swarm of smaller skeletons and uh yeah they're gonna hurt your feelings i don't remember if i can kill this guy from over here i'm gonna try Nope. Okay. Fair enough. And I'm not going in here yet because there's a uh, necromancer. I'm going to take the back path and clear out this area. Again, all of this, it's ideal to do it on one run. Um, okay, bring the guy with the club. There's an archer over there. That's why running back so quickly. Ah, hell. It's all blurry. I can't tell where he is. Okay, there he is. There he is. I need to step out just a little bit more. Ha uh ha! -huh. Uh, ha ha, too soon. Crap. Okay. There goes another one of those runners. Okay, that's good. That is a very good thing. Okay, up here is an NPC invader. Uh, 
I'm debating over whether or not to switch shields, but frankly, uh, I don't really think it matters what I have because um, she's using um, she's using a, a a bone scythe of some sort that it will it will go right through shields. So I think I might go on the light side for this one. And uh, let me pause just a second to have a sip of water. Um, I think I might go with the S talk for this fight. I think I might go with the S talk for this fight. I need to think about that for a second. I might actually go with the flame blade as well. Uh... Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna go with the flame long sword. Okay. Okay. Oh my gosh, that worked out so well for me. She normally doesn't fall for shit like that, but she totally fell for it this time. Oh my god, can I do it again? Well, no, but I did put her down pretty fast. Okay. Fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic. Okay. That's the way to get Crate and the Wanderer. There's a dude that I want to try and headshot before he sees me. Otherwise, I'm going to have to wait for him to come around. Oh, right. Locked. It's all good. It's all good. Okay, so I lucked out. I didn't have to use any of my uh, Estus flasks. And that's good, because uh, in the boss fight, I'm probably going to need most of them. Okay. That's the dude I'm looking to headshot. Need to get just a little bit more. Nope. Not quite. There we go. Nope, he's going to get away. Oh, okay. So I'm still going to have to wait for him to come around. Any second now. Um, dude. Huh. I guess I hit him so fast he didn't he didn't realize where I was. So I'll still have to deal with him here real soon. First, this is one of the three necromancers that I have to take care of.
I still don't see that guy. I mean, he should be somewhere around here, but... Because I didn't get any souls from him, so I know he didn't die. There's another archer. Crap, I hate this. <clears throat> okay, there's the archer. Step out just a little bit more. Ah, uh, he sidestepped too well. There's the dude. There's the dude. Okay. <laughs> Come on, dude. Come on, dude. Don't be like that. He's gonna be like that. Alright, there's another one. And... Okay. And there's another one. Yes. And there, okay, and that one who came out with low health, he was the one who jumped off. Mm. Uh, if you think this is bad, uh, when you play this on New Game Plus, um, you'll come out of this little hut. You will walk uh, up this ways just a little bit. And then, um, one of those big fat guys with, uh, with two sickles will come popping out of the ground. You'll turn to run this way and, oh, there's another one right there. So they want to box you in right here and beat you to death. I recommend, uh, killing one with a bow from a distance and then going back inside. The alternative is risking, uh, dodge rolling off the side to get away from an attack.
there's a crystal lizard that if I can sneak up on it and get one good slam down on it. Oh, I missed. God damn it. Uh, he got away. He's got... Yeah, he got away. Because, and I don't even know why, uh, the camera lock decided to just randomly swap over to the skeleton, even though I already had the, uh, the crystal lizard camera lock. I didn't touch the stick. Ah, uh, well. Okay. <sighs> now, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna come back to this after the boss fight. Because a fatal fall from here would just, it would wreck what little, uh, what progress I've made and I would have to start all over again. And that would make me cry. There we go. That's the dude I'm looking for. Give me a second. Uh, I'm just gonna take a puff off of my e-cigarette here because I'm, I'm kind of stressing out. It, you know, I'm very close to having that single run and now the tension is getting to me. It's a bit of performance anxiety, I admit, because, uh, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's what I want to show you when I, when I, uh, when I record footage, I want to show you, like, the best that I can do, and, okay, I'm not a great gamer, I'm really not, I'm, I, when it comes to my skills, I fall very firmly in the mediocre camp. But even being mediocre, I do want to present the very best that I can that I can show you instead of being crap like I was in the first couple of episodes. Uh, and yeah, I suppose I could blame some of the some of the mistakes that happened on on wonky uh, controls because my controller is starting to starting to die from old age, but, uh, but yeah, some of it was just boneheaded mistakes on my part, trying to rush, yeah, yeah, so now I'm going to use an iron arrow, because I think I can break this curse jar from a distance without risking myself, oh, nope, that's not the right arrow, okay, hold up, Yeah, there we go. Okay, so a few more skeletons I gotta get rid of in this area. And another uh, another necromancer. Nope. Worth a shot, but no.
Okay, I might end up uh, putting that on. Uh-oh. I hear one of them laughing, but... That high-pitched giggling is one of the curse jars. But I don't think there's any over here. I think it's over on the other side. Let me just, uh... Yeah. Very quietly. Did I already get rid of all the necromancers? I could have sworn there was one more. Alright, well... Put an arrow in his head. Yeah, I guess I did get rid of all the necromancers already. Alright. Can't complain about that. There were three, not two. Oh well. Okie dokie. So now I can rescue Crate, uh, Crate and the Wanderer. Light the bonfire, but not use it. Who are you? I thought you'd have bastard for a moment. You've set me free. Now I can find him. A cheeky prick. He won't know what hit him. Yeah, because, uh, you know, I totally, totally look like Pate. You know, dude doesn't wear a helmet. You can totally see that he's like, or wait, yeah, no, he does wear a helmet, but his face is still showy. So yeah, dude totally looks like a, like a hot chick with a tattoo on her face. So, they really needed to come up with a different line of dialogue for this guy for, for running into women. Ah, uh, well. Anyway. I am Crichton of Mira. I travel from land to land to hone my blade. I've heard this land was full of danger. I thought it would suit me perfectly. I joined forces with a man on the way. He was no more than a backstabbing knife. He took the first chance he had to try and off me. I decided to set a trap for him here. But then I'm gonna trap myself. I can't believe that I was so dense. Thank the stars that you came along. You be careful of him. Pate, I think he said. He wears this rather unusual ring. You know it. When you see it. I've seen this type before. He kills entirely for the pleasure of it. I'm sure I won't be his last victim. The man's better off dead. I tell ya. He's a slick talker. So don't let him fool ya. Pate. The man with a strange ring. Watch out for the slimy rat. And don't you believe a word he says? I'll find a common for bed and put an end to his roguery. <laughs>
Okay, so now it's time to go grab Bashful Ray and uh, and then head back through the cave to get Creighton's uh, summon sign and then take on the Skeleton Kings. But before I do that, the um, the skeletons, the little skeletons in in the boss fight, can be distracted by throwing down the alluring skull, and uh, that can actually end up saving your your allies sometimes. So. And this really is a fight where you want uh, you want some extra hands on deck because uh, it's it's dangerous. It's uh, I have soloed it. Uh, I soloed it because uh, on my first playthrough, um, I was trying to be as conservative with uh, human effigies as possible. So I was only using them once I got down to about half of my health bar. And so quite a few of the boss fights, I didn't even know where the summon signs were because I, you know, you can't see summon signs unless you have, uh, unless you've used a human effigy. up this way. Oh crap, I was going to do it again. Uh, that direction, that other bridge, is the, uh, is the way that you want to go for... Ah, so close, mm -hmm. so close. Um, no, that, that lower bridge down there is the way you want to go for the, uh, chariot boss. Uh, the gimmick fight. Which, I mean, uh, you'll see why I like it once, once we get there. But that's definitely going to be an episode, um, tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Uh, but yeah, it is a... It is a refreshing change of pace from the gimmick boss fight for um, for Dark Souls 1, which I hated the Bed of Chaos, and multiple playthroughs have not changed my opinion of that fight. But uh, even from the first fight, I really, really liked the uh, Chariot boss fight. first. That's 
like the worst possible one to go down first. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Oh my gosh. Don't be a douche, dude. Okay. Okay, this is already a long episode, but it's going to be longer still. I'm checking the time right now. Okay, it's at 109, but it's already going to be longer still. Because um, I'm going to have to double back after speaking with Lohan to get that, that one glowy bit that I left in the catacombs. Again, I want to try and do most of this without resetting. But, uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, pretty damn good, because that, that makes two areas that I've gone through and done all of the stuff that I needed to accomplish without uh, dying and taking the boss on the first attempt, so I almost, almost look like I know what I'm doing. And that's pretty good. Oh crap, that's right. Um, well, so much for that glowy bit, because I do not believe I can get back up that way. I cannot, so... I will have to go back to for the glowy bit later. That's fine. So here's Titties McGee, and you can kind of see why I gave her that name, because, um, you know, the camera just kind of naturally falls right on her titties. And here she is with her friend Yorick. Are you a traveler? I'm Cloan, a Norse stone trader. I travel about collecting rare stones, which I sell to make my living. I never planned to visit this God's forsaken place. But I don't know. I just sort of ended up here. I must have just wandered in. <laughs> but now that I'm here, I've been scouting around for rare bits. Oh, don't look at me like that. Many of these stones are quite useful. For instance, certain stones are used in smithing. Ah, oh, now your ears prick up. <laughs> Have extras if you can pay. This is my trade, after all. Before I buy anything, I'm gonna exhaust her dialogue to get her back to Majula. I came here in search of rare stones, but... The place is nothing like I was told. All this poison, and you can't get very far inside. Don't just go haplessly wandering about. These stones may look all the same, but to the trained eye, each is unique. Some of them are used to smith weapons and armor, and some unique stones provide special benefits. Some of them are extremely rare and should be used with great thrift. None of the differences are easily spotted, but I've learned quite a lot, really. <laughs> Drang Lake. How is it that I ended up here? 
It's funny. I can't seem to remember. I've searched every nook and cranny here. I suppose it's time to move on. Perhaps we'll meet again, if we live that long. <laughs> And uh, I'm just going to uh, step back for a second. I suppose it's about time I moved shop. Take stock of my inventory to see uh, to see how many small Titanite shards I have because I want to upgrade my bow, uh, the long bow to put it on. But. Before I do that, I would just like to point out that she said she searched every nook and cranny and she couldn't find any stones. There's a stone there, there's a stone there, there's a stone there, there's a stone there, there's a titanite chunk there, there's a, there's a stone over there, there's a stone there, there's a stone down below me. So, um, Chloe's kind of shit at her job. Alrighty, so I have six. Uh, I could be wrong, but I think that's all I need is six. Well, let me let me think about it for a second. It's one, two, three, and then it goes to the large shards after that. So yeah, yeah, I don't actually have to buy any small uh, Titanite shards from her. That's nice. And uh, so yeah, back to Majula. Light this bonfire up. I do not want the um, the roaring halberd that comes from uh, from the uh, skeleton lord's soul. So. I can go ahead and nom that. I think I got some sublime bone dust as well. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Okay. Is that a shard you found? How? Whoops. Now I'm in the left one. Uh, I think most of this is going to go into a, a adaptability because um, since I don't have a, since I don't have a ring of poison resistance, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a good idea to go and do that. that long bow, I can swap that over. Get some extra loot. Get some extra loot out of my arrows. Just double check and make sure. 
sure I can still dodge roll quickly. I can. And then test the same thing with the um, twin blade strapped on. If I can find it. There it is. I can. All right. Fantastic. Uh, how many did I have? Okay, I mean, technically I can buy one more per McDuff, but then I'd have to, uh, I'd have to, uh, grind a little bit to pay for pay for the upgrade so and I'm gonna go ahead and do that before I head into the next uh, recording tomorrow uh, so that can concludes this episode and I am I got to admit I'm pretty happy with the last two episodes because in um, in both cases I was able to go through a pretty tricky area get just about everything that I needed on one run without without dying. Uh, I even managed to whip an NPC invader's butt who she normally, she just wrecks me. <laughs> uh, her, her scythe can eat through a shield, uh, but didn't do it this time. So, good deal. Alrighty then, so that's it for this episode. And I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you next time.